<laughs> oh, I'm beginning to know you are, Ben. When you were a little kid, when you got a new toy on Christmas morning, you used to play with it until it broke, didn't you? Admit it. I think you're trying to break me, but still. Sometimes it's fun. Uh, book recommendations, I'll probably send you a message with book recommendations, or I might add them. How do we do it? Over there? My, my. Lot of, lot of, lot of, uh, as you say, a long question. Um, all forces are one, or will turn out to be one, or were one. Absolutely, that's what a theory of everything is. You've got that one absolutely on the head, um, and you're in line with most of the smart, the really smart dudes on the planet. So put that one to rest. I think you'll probably turn out to be right about that for what it's for what it's worth. Um, nothing exists. A little bit more questionable that. I mean, you're sending me a video. You know, if 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 nothing existed, I can't predict. Well, I can predict exactly what would happen, and that'd be nothing. If nothing exists, then nothing can happen. So, uh, that what's happening there is is metaphysics. Now, there's a few people who might disagree with me, but my definition of metaphysics is, is what physicists do when they get really, really drunk or as high as a kite. Uh, it's, it's just playing with what might be. So, you're playing with what might be, and there's nothing wrong with that, as long as you... Uh, tie your cow at kite to the ground and reel it in when you finish playing with it so so something exists dude and your <laughs> your proof of that mug versus anti mug um interesting because you you're talking uh, obviously about antimatter which does exist and um the guy to check out for the origin of the idea of antimatter is a guy called Paul Dirac, uh, which I'll, which is probably on the screen right now as I speak. In the beginning, there was an almost equal amount of antimatter to matter, and they met and exploded and annihilated, to use the correct term. You might say that antimatter won, and that we're made of antimatter. Because if we were antimatter, then matter would seem to us antimatter. Enjoy your headache. Um, backwards time travel possible, uh, as you rightly and correctly say, no. You, you're absolutely right again. Um, but because you specified backwards time travel, you reveal to me that you know something about special relativity and forward time travel. So I won't go into that, but. Uh, the fact that you've obviously got some knowledge uh, on which to base your metaphysics uh, hasn't gone missed. Incidentally, uh, anything that is without mass, like a photon, can reach the speed of light. And once you can actually reach the speed of light, then you no longer experience time. So uh, a flower can't experience time because it hasn't got a brain at the end of its nervous system, but um, a photon does not experience time at all. When a photon leaves the surface of the sun and comes here, from the photon's perspective, not that it has a perspective, uh, but if you could ride with the photon, it would be like that. Indeed, the whole of the universe, if you were a fleet free-floating photon which didn't interact with anything and maintained a, uh, the speed of light, the whole universe could pass in an instant. I hope the headache's not getting too bad. How's the time going? Not bad. Everything is there because of nothing. 
I just felt like repeating that because it made me laugh. Uh, big bang yes, big crunch no. Again, you're spot on. This question of yours contains an awful lot of factual statements. Um, I used to believe in the big crunch. That that always struck me as quite a nice romantic notion. Um, I was very proud of the fact that when I saw the evidence against the big crunch, that although it took me a week, I did let go of the idea of a big crunch and accepted that the uh, the uh, accelerated and infinite expansion is the way it's going to go. Um, there was something else I wanted to say about that. So yeah, the big freeze, as you call it, that's 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 uh, heat death. Not a very nice expression, but that's what ultimately will happen. It seems um, all of the available energy. Although we may not be able to use all the energy that's out there, there is a finite amount of it, and nature uses that energy. And also, um, the things which contain that energy are gradually, the galaxies are gradually becoming separated from each other, and as such will not be able to get their hands, for want of a better word, on the available energy in the future. So, I'm thinking about, and I'm guessing, I'm thinking about in a trillion years, maybe a hundred trillion years, um, not a lot's going to be happening. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. We won't find a place where nothing exists. Again! What, what, are you a genius? You're right. There's a saying that nature abhors a vacuum. Nature hates a vacuum. Um, and it may be deeper than that. It may be that nature abhors non-existence um, particle if, if we did make if there was a box here and we pumped all of the everything out of it so that there was nothing in it there would still be something in it because um, particles pop into existence and wink out of existence all the time they call it the quantum foam I'm, uh, I'm not too sure of the, the physics behind it although I've read it 20 times, something along the, I, the, I, the lines of a particle and its antiparticle can come into existence by borrowing energy from the vacuum. Um, the more energy they borrow, i.e. The, the heavier the particle that they make, um, the quicker they have to pay it back. So theoretically, and please don't read too much into this, a whole Ben could pop into existence, but it would have to cease to be so fast as to make no difference. Uh, anodin is good for headaches. Uh, and don't rule out another Big Bang. Well, I don't either. When, when the universe has expanded, if we imagine this is the universe, or rather, this is the universe, and it, it expands, maybe in a hundred trillion, a trillion trillion, a trillion 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 years, because nature abhors a vacuum and because nature can produce um, particles out of a vacuum, maybe it will maybe maybe the big bang isn't a big bang. Maybe it's a big suck. Maybe uh, maybe the, the emptiness of the universe reaches such a point that the expanding universe sucks another universe into existence. Um, but that would be metaphysics and that would be unprovable. And as with all metaphysics, it's not really worth wasting your time on. Um, better to get the real physics into your head, and that conf that that restricts what your metaphysics will be. Um, some people might say it's metaphysical to imagine a unicorn appearing. I mean, quantum mechanically, it's possible that all these free floating floating atoms of different types could suddenly coalesce into a unicorn, but. I say that's bollocks. <laughs> you have to you have to ground your metaphysics, otherwise it can run you in circles and it can run you up blind alleys. So the only way to ground you've obviously got a great imagination. I don't have to hear you say a word about science to know what a great imagination you've got. Just uh, tame your unruly pet, Ben, and see you soon. And please, please, please. Stop forcing me into making metaphysical statements. I hate metaphysics. It's crap.